Hello and welcome to Chindu.org. In this series of videos, we are looking at some advanced pivot table tricks. In this video, let's take a look at quick and cheeky way to count distinct records in any combination using pivot tables. Let's say you are looking at some data like this. So this is a, an extract from a CRM system which lists ticket number, customer who has raised that ticket and the date in which that was raised. So this has about 300 rows of information and many of the tickets come from same customer. For example, if I sort this A to Z, you can see that customer 10 has been busy and they have raised total of six tickets, whereas customer 11, three tickets, customer 12, five tickets like that. Now, if I want to count how many total records are there, how many total customers are there in any given day or something, then the pivot table approach would be wrong and we will see how to fix that problem with the distinct count. Let's say I want to see by date how many tickets have come through. So I can go to insert pivot table and then I can insert a pivot report here. Uh, we'll put date into rows and then uh, ticket number into values so that you can see by each day how many tickets we are getting. This is all good. But let's now say I want to count how many customers were engaging with us on each day. If I count customer ID, I would get the same number because um, on each day there are 12 customer IDs. Let's take a look at 1 Jan 2020. Here we can go and filter by uh, 1 Jan 2020 and these are all the customers. And as you could clearly see, customer 60 has uh, has made two tickets. So the actual count of customers should have been 11 not 12 uh, Same would be true for any other day for that matter There might be some duplicates like customer 37 has appeared twice customer 51 has appeared twice and the customer That's about it. <laughs> so how do you count this correctly? Well, uh, if I go right click and then value field settings, there is no option here to do distinct count. I can only do count. But there is a technique that you can use to quickly get distinct count from your data. I'll clear any filters and then we will go and insert pivot table again. But this time, make sure you tick on this box. Now, this is an option that you can use in 2013 and above um, with, uh, with Excel. So it's been around for quite some time now. And when you do this, nothing really happens. You will still get the same kind of a tick layout, but there are some cosmetic changes in the pivot table field section. You now see uh, a table and field list. Uh, this actually allows you to build pivot tables from multiple tables. So that's another powerful technique as well. And now we will go back and build the same report, which is Google add date. We'll count how many tickets are there and we'll count how many customers are there. Oh, what happened? It still says 12. That's because we are still counting. We need to change the nature of this to distinct count. Right click, go to summarize values, more options, and all the way down, you will see that cheeky little distinct count. This wouldn't appear on normal pivot tables, but the moment you use add to data model option, this is something that you can use straight away. And then that would change the numbers correctly, uh, and it will tell you that across the month you have 286 tickets but they all came from 56 different customers so i hope you found this particular technique useful and interesting there is a bonus trick here as well once you add to data model distinct count is one of the thousands of things that you can literally calculate of course when you go to summarize values by you will only see a bunch of options there is not many more so where are all these thousands coming from that's because once you add a pivot table to a data model, essentially you are using a different type of calculation logic to make these pivot tables and that whole thing is called power pivot. And with power pivot, you can add any other types of calculations as well. All you have to do is right click on the table and then you will see this little add measure option. And from here, you can add measures to uh, really perform complex calculations on your data. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate how that particular feature works in this video. That will be saved for another advanced pivot table trick. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to check out the example file from the description of this video. And please like and subscribe to this channel if you uh, 
uh, enjoyed this video. Thanks. Bye-bye.